and therefore it is man that is center stage. It is man in his sin that caused the disruption at the time of the flood and God finally said, I've had enough. It was man that was preserved in the ark and those creatures necessary to sustain life were preserved with him, but primarily it was the moral nature of man. It was man for whom Jesus Christ died. It is man who will be judged in a tribulation period. It is man who will get to live and rule and reign even though the dinosaurs, uh, and there are certain remnants of dinosaurs, those dinosaurs will again be prolific according to Isaiah chapter 35 when the desert blossoms as a rose. But it is man in perspective here with the king man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the God man ruling with us. And it is man who will ultimately be blessed and benefited. If you want to see God, watch God in the way he works with mankind. You want to see God? Watch God in his performance of a new life that has found peace in Jesus Christ. You see, I have often said on this program, the mind of man is able to measure the distance to the farthest star, weigh the mass of the universe, and interpret the signals coming to us from all directions. Now that's marvelous. But when that mind is regenerate, when there is a new birth added to the existence of mankind, there is a new dimension. I have spoken to scientists personally who have admitted, once I received Jesus Christ as my Savior, first I was at peace with God, then I was at peace with myself, then I was at peace with my family. In spite of all the discordant messages that are coming in and in spite of all the problems that we all have and we all do have the responsibilities of life and problems, in spite of that, there's a peace within. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I to you. I give you my peace. I have it right, therefore I will make you right. So the new birth, the power of the new birth is incredibly important and makes a wonderful change. I've heard scientists say that they have insights to problems their minds are enlarged because they're able to focus with a peace. And they have a peace with the world, but ultimately, of course, peace with God. Then, show me God. We, show, we see God in realizing the perspective that he has. The geologic column is illustrated here, recording to evolution simpler systems evolve to more complicated systems. Yet in that geologic column, the rock layers of the earth, in that geologic column, we have polystrate fossils. Now what on earth are polystrate fossils? Those are fossils that go from one layer to another, to another, to another. In fact, sometime those fossils such as this one near Cookville, Tennessee, go from coal, where the fossil is coalified, one single fossil, a tree trunk, from coal to sandstone to coal to limestone to coal to more limestone. This fossil encompasses more than five million years of evolutionary assignment. There is no way that fossil could remain in place five million years as an organism. It did not remain in place five million years. If you look very closely, the fossil roots have the tentacles of the roots torn off. The branches are torn off. When a large tree is accosted by a flood, the root systems deteriorate, the tentacles of the root systems break off, they're sheared off. The limbs are quite often sheared off and then the trunk becomes waterlogged and it turns upright and it floats quite often and lands upright as if it were growing when it actually is deposited there by sedimentary effects of the water and the flood. Thus we have these fossils as a result of a flood 
a worldwide flood. Let's see it from God's perspective. The ultimate expression of God, show me God, is the person of Jesus Christ. And let's add to that the persuasion of the Holy Spirit at this moment, bringing you to a realization that the person of Jesus Christ is your hope and your only hope. And the Holy Spirit at this moment in time has brought you to conviction. Will you pray a simple prayer? A prayer intended as an invitation from the scripture. The Bible says, come unto me, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest to your souls. Would you come to him? Would you right now just pray this simple prayer? Dear God, thank you for bringing me to this moment. I realize I'm a sinner. I need help. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for me. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you. Right now, step into my heart and live, and I'll serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, you now know God. Not only have you been shown God, you know Him. He lives within you. The peace that He has given you will pervade every area of your life. That doesn't mean life will be rosy, but it does mean that in spite of the storms, you'll have the peace within. And no matter what difficulties come your way, God lives within you. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.